Um, Debbie and I are here today to uh, alert you to a resource. So there, it's not going to be a big activity time, but it is going to be a necessary resource that you want to start bringing to your PLC meetings. And we're going to kind of go through it. You have a paper copy, and if you want to get online, this is how you do it. Okay, so basically we're going to talk about the framework. The framework is one of the best resources there is. Every question people ask me, the answer lies in the framework, okay? Um, right now, the framework is something like 900 pages long, so it's not in print. So if you have a paper copy, it's the copy that Kara printed for you, and you can see the numbers, the editing numbers along the side. We don't know when it will come out in print, but it is online. And so I, I strongly, I envision that every time you have a PLC meeting, this is up on either a computer or on a projector so that you can refer to it if you have questions or if you want to look at the depth of a standard. And we'll go through this. Okay? So here we go. If you look for it, so the people who have a paper copy, when you do cde.ca.gov, that's CDE's website. But anyway, Smiling Tom, Tom Torlickson is up in the corner. Above his head is the search bar. And that's where you put math framework chapters. Okay? And you will get this page. You could also just Google. I know Debbie likes to do that. <laughs> It'll probably be the first thing that pops up. And what you want is you want the chapter page because look what you get. You get all the chapters, and we're going to look at the grade level chapter. Okay? So there's one for every grade level. And what do you call these, Debbie? Topics? I or have to get over here and see what program, you're talking about. The high school stuff. The, uh, oh, I forgot. They just have big categories, and I forget the official Algebra. name. I believe it's called a cluster, but I'm not sure. I might I don't be wrong. Know. Might I don't be a know domain. Either. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, through and give you some chances to look at this and see, and we're trying to make a case on why it's such a valuable <coughs> resource, okay? So in your grade level, level chapter, you have an overview. We'll talk about that. You have the definition of focus, coherence, and rigor, which is the big shift in the Common Core. You have your cluster emphasis. We'll talk about that. You have examples of your math practice standards, and then you have an analysis of the grade level standards and the learning for next year, and then the grade level standards finally show up. Okay? Most of you have probably been living with just the standards. This tells the story of it all. Okay? Fran? Yes. The people that made these are a bunch of math educators, uh, people in the classroom, and they, they parsed out the work so they had a group that was working on K, a group that was working on one, a group that, and put really good brains together to actually figure out how to make sense of what Common Core was doing and put, they actually have some resources in here. So it's pretty, I'm happy it's not in print because there's no way they would have kept all the cool things that are in there. You're right. So um, it's, it's nice. It's a very cool document. Yes. And in fact, I used to always think that the framework was sort of my contract because it describes a, a classroom in the state of California, a math classroom in the state of California. So here we go. So here's the first thing. And what we want you to do is this is around the first page of your um, document. And it is your grade level overview. OK? And what's really cool about this is there's two parts to it. This will say what has come before your grade. It's a little kind of summary. And then it talks about what kiddos have to learn within your grade. Someone the other day said this is a great little piece that you could give to parents, okay? So why don't you take a moment and look at that with your buddies, read through it, see if anything strikes you as odd or comforting or Okay, anything shocking? Does it kind of go along the sixth grade, you go, okay, that makes sense, okay? And that's just the first page. There's more, okay? Please, if you have a question, because I know this is really lecture. Debbie said a cute thing. She goes, I knew these weren't your slides, Fran, because you're not doing anything but lecturing. And I said, oh, but they are. <laughs> so because we just got to get. That was not quite how the conversation went. <laughs> it's my version, and that's a good one. <laughs> but what we want to do is make sure you know this resource is there, because any question you get, is probably in here. Okay, so let's keep going. So this is the massive shift from the Common Core, and the Common Core is built on these three shifts, focus, coherence, and rigor. 
So focus is this idea that instruction is focused on the grade level standards. So we're really staying within our grade level standards. Now, here's a caution. Go Math may not have the same focus that you're expected to have at sixth grade. So we're going to alert you to where you look for that, OK? Because you might have to make some decisions about how long to stay in a lesson or three, and maybe some lessons to sort of glide over, OK? The next is coherence. Instruction should be attentive to learning across the grade levels. What you do in sixth grade matters to seventh grade, to eighth grade, and above. Oh, you got one, OK? Coherence is really important. And long division of fractions is one of those things that you're going to build off of what the fifth grade teachers have been doing. They've been doing some long division with special numbers and fractions. Actually, they also build off the uh, standard algorithm for division shows up in sixth grade. Right. But all the division work came before it. Right. So when you do the, long, the standard algorithm, there should be division understanding. And there's a really cool thing in the sixth grade. It's, wait till you see it. Okay, it's good, cool. good, good. And then I'm the last excited. one, R does, this R word does not mean harder. Okay? It's sort of all encompassing. The idea of rigor in the Common Core says the instruction should develop conceptual understanding. So that's understanding things at a deep level. Oh, that's cool. Being able to make connections. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, first I thought that was you. I thought you were sneezing. Um, <laughs> bless you. Um, understanding things at a deep level so you music. can make connections. All right? Procedural skill and fluency, we're not letting go of that. We are not. We're just balancing it out. It's not all of your grade level. Okay? And then application. The big idea that you know something, now how do you apply it to real situations? Okay, so this is the massive part. And there are definitions in there. The definitions are in there. Okay? So here we go. Here, I'll keep, let me find it. So find your little focus, coherence, and rigor section. Sorry. I just was and here happens to be an example from seventh grade, but you'll find plenty of examples in yours. And Kara actually typed this up quite nicely for us because what she did is she kept, she put the uh, math practice standard in purple. So if you look at this, here's just an example of how it should go, that they build up the rules for operations and ra with rational numbers as modeled in the narratives on addition and subtraction. And then look, now we shift into the math practice. Making use of the structure of the number system, students should engage in class or small group discussions about the meaning of operations until a consens consensus understanding is reached. So there'll be references to the math practices in the explanation of the standards. Okay? So look over one or two, chat with, under the focus, coherence, and rigor, find your definitions. I wish I could say a page, but I don't because they're all different. Find it? Oh, I see. Did you find it? No. That was helpful. It's just on, yep. So it's just on page two. It's on the back side, page two. So now what I want you to do is find a grade cluster, your cluster level emphasis. And it should say grade six cluster level emphasis. Okay. And if you, um, uh, let's see, keep going. Whoever finds it, and I apologize that we one. Give us a line number. Bottom of page two. There it is. Okay, bottom of page two. Okay. So what it will do is it'll explain the domain. Okay, the domain, and then there are these clusters that live underneath, and there it, the clusters are the um, examples, or I'm sorry, the titles underneath, okay? And then in parentheses behind a cluster standard, or cluster statement, you'll see um, the standard notation, and then you'll see a symbol. These symbols are incredibly important, okay? Because below, do you see the box below? They explain the symbols. So your major clusters are your triangles. That means this is the place, if it's a major cluster, in sixth grade where kids have to really develop that rigor. They have to develop conceptual understanding. They have to be able to use a procedure if it's called out in the standards. And they have to start applying it. It's really deep understanding of those major clusters. Probably not the day you want the sub to teach that lesson. No. And here's and that's a good point. Here's another idea though. Go math may only treat some of your major clusters with one or two lessons. So as a PLC group, you have to decide is that enough?
Do we need more? Because if this is the big ticket item and seventh grade is expecting that they understand that so they can build on it, then you have to make some dec decisions about that in your PLC. Okay? So then the other two kinds of standards are the supporting, and they're marked with an S, or the additional, which are marked with an A. Now, these are not standards to skip or ignore because remember the coherence idea? It's necessary for grades behind you to start building that foundation, to start kind of planting that idea. So you don't want to skip them, but they are quite different than the major clusters. Okay, why don't you take a second and talk with the folks around you about what you're seeing as major in your grade level. So let's open this online. discussion. Anything surprise you about being a major cluster? Or is there anything that now, since you know this, Go Math may not be supporting in the way, OK, I'm seeing some nods there. Because Go Math, and I'm not bashing anything, but Go Math will be written more like a couple lessons for one standard, where you may need a couple weeks for one of these major standards. So that's, that's the cool thing. That's why we all have jobs, right? Because we get to make these decisions. And in the past, we probably made these decisions with, without this information. And now we have it, so that's perfect for the PLC to talk about this is major. What are we going to do with this? Debbie? And in light of what we were doing last year, we were really trying to think about strategies for us to be able to play kid detectives. Maybe two lessons that Go Math does is just fine because your kids, while you're busy playing kid detective and finding out what they know and doing those strategies, maybe they're fine with just two lessons because they've got it nailed, but maybe they aren't. So it's, it's not just a matter of whether we think. We've got to see what, what do our kids actually need. Do they need two days or do they need three weeks? Absolutely. And maybe some of those lessons you might not need to do much of especially if they're an additional or supporting and your kiddos can do it, okay? So it's this idea of really starting to look at what you're collecting as formative assessment and making decisions as a PLC on how long you're going to stay in certain places because these major clusters are huge. So, and, and I want to reiterate, GoMath had to pass a, a panel of people that went through every page and they had to be able to find the standard but they did not um, evaluate how long the standard was covered that's up to us okay other did you Debbie I was just going to say, we're going to go through some of this stuff kind of fast, and I was just telling Fran about, maybe th think about it like an analogy, like we brought in the menu from a restaurant that you've never been to, and we're just going to kind of go over the menu a little bit, and then when you get ready to go to your PLCs, you go, okay, I got this, this menu of stuff that's available to me that might be helpful with my PLC in the framework, so know that. We're, we don't think that we're going to do this at, with, at such depth that you're going to really own it. Right. We're just kind of go, giving you an idea of what, what's available to you as a resource. And if you need us at a PLC to go into more depth with your group, we're happy to do that. You just let us know. Let Jerry know, okay? Because this really is the best resource out there, okay? All right, ready? Okay. Oh, this is my favorite part, okay? So find your standards for math practice um, chart. And it looks just like that, even though that's seventh grade. And down the left-hand side are the titles of the eight standards for mathematical practice. And then, here's what's so cool. In the exp I know, I love this. I'm so excited. Um, we're way math nerds, because we get excited about that kind of stuff. Under explanation examples, oh my gosh, they explain what a sixth grader should be able to start to do. Now, in this transition time, you might want to go online and look at what a fifth grader should be able to do, what a fourth grader should be able to do, because they're not coming necessarily to you ready yet. So you might want to look back and say, okay, maybe I got to work on this so I can get to this. So right now, take a moment, read over them, chat about them, read one of your favorites, and find out, read about your kids and see what happens. When you read the All right, what do you think of this? No, still scary. Is it kind of yeah. fun? Is it doable? I don't know. That might be overwhelming. <laughs> Is it scary? 
I have to tell you, in our travels, we are totally seeing kids that are exhibiting a lot of these behaviors. When we start to ask, and not everyone, I'm not here to say everyone, but when, when we start to ask them questions, they really do start to, you know, make sense. They start to make connections. They start to see if an answer is reasonable. Now, we had a question about intervention, and this is more for content, but I just, before I forget, we saw an interesting thing today that kind of dealt with front loading. So the problem that they were doing in Go Math had to do with more than, less than, and they had to pick a, di a number to work with in their, in their uh, performance assessment, right? So the teacher didn't think that they could pick a number that was greater than one and less than seven. They were little kids. So she front loaded it and she said, huh, tell me all the numbers you know that are greater than one. And kids were saying things like, you know, a billion, you know, that kind of thing. She goes, okay, now, which of these numbers are also less than seven? And it was like a two-minute, three-minute thing. It was a little warm-up, and then she didn't even refer to it. They went back to do their problem, and in the problem it said that these kids were, I don't know, it was an audition, and, and there were, you know, between one, greater than one, but less than seven kids per hour. And they were ready. So this idea of front loading for some of those smaller details, you might have to do in a warm up kind of quick way. But it was really effective. It was kind of fun to watch. So any comments about this? This is why we brought you last year, it sounds like a commercial, but this is why we brought you choose three ways, think pair share with the whiteboard, um, starts, and number talks. Because you see all of those can live in that document. Kids are doing everything that we've asked, I mean, that are, it is in that document, most of it, in, in those templates. So if you're, if you're doing that, you're probably going to get better and better at that. And you, now you have some things you can identify for sixth graders. Comments, questions, complaints? Oh, you're all on camera, so you're not going to say anything. All right. You can make a face at me if you want. I had some third graders make a funny face at me today because I told them their answer was wrong, and they went, like that, but no one could see it, only me, because I was at the front of the room. Okay, so this is a great thing. Also, if I, I mean, this might be something that kids know about. You know, this de describes a sixth grader, why can't they see it, right? This might be something parents, although they might drill them on it, but it might be kind of fun, okay? All right, so now we get into explanation of the standards, and this is going to take a little bit longer. So if you see there's a blue heading, you probably don't have a blue heading, but there's a blue heading, that is your dom domain right there. So ratios and proportional relationships, okay? So you have a lot of cluster statements that are below that domain. So what they do is in the box, they explain, there's the cluster statement. And then they go ahead and they go through some examples, what it means, the depth to which you've got to go. This is a great resource when people go, I don't understand the standard. Go find it and let's talk about it. Let's, let's decide what should a kid be able to do if they're working at this depth that's described in the framework. So take some time with your buddies and all of your standards. I mean, you've got all your domains. You can take a look at them. Maybe pick something you're working in right now if you want to, okay? And chat about that way. We sort of eavesdrop. Let's come back together on this. Two interesting comments, actually three. We have an intervention question on the floor, actually, that we'll come to by the end. And then we have some sort of interesting observations that the lesson may not have included, either did not go as far as the framework is saying you need to go, and you might have done all the lessons, who knows, in the book, there might be more, or it went too far. I have to say, that is a, that's a common thing for the standard algorithm in the lower grades. They bring in the standard algorithm before it says you need to know the standard algorithm. So see, if I know that, I get to make decisions about that. If I don't know that, I labor through when maybe I don't have to, okay? So we'll, we'll get to intervention. Any comments or questions about these? So honestly, this would be a part that I would go to anytime my PLC is talking about a standard or a set of lessons, I would look at what it looks like in here to make sure you know how far you have to go or where you can stop. Okay? Comments? Friends, can I yes. 
Yes, you can. Uh, that part you said about you know that you don't have to labor through the rest of this, really important. You know, if only part of the lesson applies. And she's the boss. She's the purple boss, so you're going to listen to her. We boss, <laughs> yeah, we have a green boss, a red boss. Um, but you know what, because people are coming up to me and saying, oh my gosh, my kids can't, and I say, is it a standard? And they say, well, it's in Go Math, and I say, but is it a standard? So you really, I mean, that's not fair to us as teachers who don't have a lot of time, but as soon as you get good at your standards, you'll be able to go, oh yeah, okay. And honestly, I put a note in my teacher's edition to say, go up to this point. Okay, thank you, Diane. This is Diane Wilson, if they don't know her. Yes, this is she, Diane she Wilson. She's the, she's the head of math, and yeah. so she said it. Okay? So you can say the purple lady said it, although she wears other colors. Okay, <laughs> comments or anything on that? <laughs> Hopefully that lightened your load in some cases, but it might have stressed you out in others, and I apologize about that. It's all your fault, Brandon. It is. I had nothing, I didn't write it, although I love it, I didn't write it. Okay, so now we get to do a little commercial. Are you ready? And I told Kara I would do this fast, but this is my passion. One of the things that is in your grade level chapter that you can talk about, because this is an intervention issue for you, is this idea of fluency. Fluency has a completely different definition than we're used to, okay? So let's talk about what it means. It means that you're fast and accurate, but nowhere in this document does it say you can do 100 uh, facts in a minute. <laughs> nowhere, okay? That's not there. Fast and accurate, a PLC conversation. What does that mean? It means when you're fluent in math facts and uh, standard algorithms that it's like you're fluent in a foreign language. Okay, so it means that you're not halting, stumbling, or reversing yourself. Okay, K6 has fluency. Ooh, what happened to that? Oh my. K6 has fluency expectations for the standard algorithm. You have yours is division, long division. Okay, so you have expectations. The people below you have a lot. Okay, the standard algorithms, now this is a big idea and we're going to do more with this in December, this, or January. The standard algorithm is the end of the line. Traditionally, the standard algorithm is the first thing kiddos see and they don't have a chance at understanding that shortcut. Okay, so the standard algorithm is the end of a progression of learning all about division. So the idea is that when the standard algorithm shows up, kids go, oh, okay, this makes sense. Because long division is a massive shortcut. If we have to use things like mommy, daddy, sister, brother, we know kids are not understanding, and that's probably not even the right order, okay? When we have to give them cutesy little things. It spanned, the progression spans several grades. It's not just the grade before you. It's based and rooted in conceptual understanding. So they're learning what division is all about. Okay? It's thoughtful practice and there's extra support where necessary. So if the long division, if your fifth grade buddies are saying the long division standard algorithm is driving my kids crazy, say, oh, you don't have to do it. Wait till you go talk to Fran and Deb about it. Yes. I'm a parent <laughs> of a fourth grader and he I had reams mm -hmm. of diagrams of long division? Of no, 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 no. Oh. I, not of the algorithm, but of visual models. Oh. Of divide the, the yes. conceptual. It's not that division doesn't happen. It's and just yes. not the algorithm. He he gets it. And as a mom who is, you know, part of all of this, I can explain to him. Well, this is why you yes. need to do yes. this because what he says. These are his exact words. The standard algorithm is so much easier. Why can't I just do that? Well, then you do it. Right. You do it. Yeah. And you say. And here's another way to c divide too. I think, I mean, as a parent, I can explain that to him because I'm familiar with all of this, right. but we have the parents who are at home saying, oh, this is the common core. Yeah, that's right. That's what they're saying. Why can't you just do the standard algorithm? Yeah, that's what they're saying. I don't so have an answer. We need a balance <laughs> somehow to be yeah. between once you get it and you get the conceptual, let's move. Yeah. The well, problem, I oh, go ahead, Deb. As we all, as professionals, yeah. get used to this and we'll yes. start recognizing when, when it seems like the preponderance of our students are ready for that, then we go for the standard algorithm that day, but we're not there yet. That's another issue with the parents who haven't even got an idea about 
Yeah. Because I know there's parents who are sitting at home watching their children do that, and they can't, they don't have the words to explain to them. Well, I mean, you bring up, and, and I'm just, because I'm supposed to go fast on this part, even though it's my passion. Um, Kara's making faces at me and looking at the <laughs> clock. She's going, huh. Ah. Um, the idea is that maybe in? homework shouldn't go home that kiddos can't do. That's a whole different conversation. That homework really is thoughtful practice, not excruciatingly frustrating practice. Okay, so something to ponder about homework. Maybe we have to change what we think about homework. Okay, fluent in the standards means reasonably fast and accurate and the ability to use certain facts and procedures with enough facility that it will not slow down or derail you. That's huge, because if you need facts or procedures to solve a problem, you shouldn't get stuck so that now you can't solve the problem. You don't have to write this down, because I'm going to show you where it is, I promise. Developing fluency in each grade can involve, and this is for facts, just knowing some of the answers, knowing some answers from patterns, and knowing some answers from the use of strategies. And that's what all of the people below you are living with. The procedural fluency in procedures, you can carry it out flexibly, you are accurate, you know when you're right, you have a chance, you're efficient, and you use it at an appropriate time. Okay, That's what fluency means. All right, and that's where your fluency definition is. If you look under your, what is the, it, in sixth grade, it's the number system, it will be living in NS, I believe. And it's just a box, and it looks exactly like that. Anybody got a line number yet? Anybody? F How many? 349. 349. 349. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So put a big star next to that. This is also, an, I, like I said before, not just for division, but an intervention issue for you. So if you have kids who can't do procedures and don't know facts, you can look back and see what happened in the grade levels before you. And they would be in, in their domain is operations and algebraic thinking. Comments on that? All right, last thing. So I want you to take just a moment, we have about three or four minutes, to um, this is a Venn diagram, and on the top, it, I mean right in the middle, in the overlapping is your grade, so your major clusters. Here's the grade that feeds you, and I'm going to put fifth grade on there. I want you to have a discussion about what kids should be coming in based on their major clusters, okay? So here we go. There's fifth grade. Major clusters would be the green boxes, okay? Supporting clusters, you can see what they have to do to help you and additional clusters as well. So take a look and talk about what fifth grade, just talk with your neighbors. This is an intervention idea too, you know? Oh, you're so quiet. They're trying to read. Oh, that's right, They're I'm squinting. staying in the way. Get out of the way, Stetson. All the grades will go up on the Google Drive. So if you want to use it for your PLCs, Second thing, this could also be a little bit of a driver for intervention. When you see what's major in the grades before you, if they're missing it, maybe that's small group intervention. Okay. Were you going to say something, Debbie? Sure. I was going to share one <laughs> thought about, and I just shared it with that table, but oh, I'll share it whole group. It sure. was with parents when you're trying, when they're having that hard conversation of, well, how come my kid has to do it, know how to do it, and why it works from the long way as opposed to just doing the algorithm. Common Core is trying to address the issue that we got to teach kids how to think. There's, there's a new stat every day and I keep losing it. Like seven out of 10 jobs have yet to be created or you know, there's gonna be twice as many majors when your child gets to college that, that aren't, haven't even been thought of yet. We don't know what, we can't tell them how to do everything because they're gonna be new stuff invented. So that's why we're trying to do a good job of both. And you gotta learn how to play well with others because yes. that's, that's a why huge people get one. fired. What was yeah. it? I missed it, I was talking. I don't know why you're right. Yeah, don't you love asking kids that? Are you right? I don't know, it's what I got. That's just infuriating. Well, if you don't know why you're right, it's easy to convince you that you're wrong. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you can do that with kids yourself. You just repeat the answer back with a question mark, and they will change their mind. I mean, it's horrible that we do that to them, but that's a measure that they don't know yet. Okay? So the other document that um, Kara will put up for the future would be what you're feeding into grade 7. So look at the major clusters for grade seven. The supporting clusters may not pertain to you as much and the additional. But those majors, you're probably building some foundation for that in sixth grade. OK? 
Okay. And when you read something up there and you're like, oh, what do they really mean by that? You can go to this same document, right, in that place where it explains the standards only look at seventh grade to actually say, oh, what do they really mean by that? Okay, now I know. Yes. I just have a question about middle school math. Are they just, are all seventh graders just doing seventh grade math, or is it kind of like in the past they would be put in different classes? The Common Core says there is a seventh grade math course and an eighth grade math course. What then districts do can be a different ball game. I think you guys are in transition, and that's a, which is sort of, oh, Diane knows. There you go. Um, math 7 is exactly what you see in there, Math 8 is exactly what you see in there, and then Accelerated 7 is those two put together and taught in one year, and there are just parts of three little standards that are left out of there, and then those students in Accelerated 7, and this year the goal for Elk Grove was to have 25% of the 7th graders in Accelerated 7, those students in eighth grade will take either Algebra 1 or Integrated Math 1, depending on the results of the pilot that we're doing right now. Super. Well, that was a yeah, far no better answer. seventh graders going from sixth grade math to Algebra 1. That's no, true. that's not happening. Okay? So yeah. The last thing before we, um, Thanks, actually, we're not sending you anywhere, you're just switching teachers, is in the very back of your document, are, there's two things you want to pay attention to. Um, the overview is not, does not have the major clusters listed, but it has your domains and your cluster statements. Oh, thank you, Carolyn, for letting me borrow this. <laughs> I just took it from her. And then there are your standards. So just the listing of your standards. So now you know that there's a resource out there that sort of tells the complete story. Okay.